South Africans honor global icon Nelson Mandela on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Many today have carried out good deeds in his memory. The ANC sacks an employee arrested in connection with a cash and transit heist. This is E! News at 8, live from Johannesburg. I'm Sally Burdett. Good evening. Well, today, of course, we've been remembering Nelson Mandela on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Let's start our coverage in Mverso in the Eastern Cape, where Madiba was born. Mandela Mandela and former president Khalema Motlante spent the morning handing out blankets to the elderly in Mverso. Leaders and dignitaries from around Africa attended the centenary event. Pupils there have received bicycles and a clinic has been opened. Mverso chief Mandela Mandela says the best way to honor his grandfather is to display acts of kindness. Grandfather dedicated 67 years of his life serving humanity. And therefore, if there's only one word I should use to really describe my grandfather is that we should be of service to our communities that we live in and ensuring that we make this world a better place. Uh, for us as a family, the Mbezo tradition Council and our friends in the global community, such as the Miss World Organization, is to ensure that uh, we continue the fight of bettering this world we live in and ensuring that uh, we live in peace and prosperity. President Cyril Ramaphosa also took part in those events today in Verso, but he had a very serious message for our country. He says he believes Nelson Mandela would have been disappointed by the racism and tribalism in our country today. We are called upon to stand up and speak out on the values for which Madiba lived and for which so many fought for are being denigrated by those who have no interest in progress in our country. There is no place for racism in South Africa. There is no place for tribalism in our country. There is no place for ethnic chauvinism in the South Africa of Nelson Mandela. Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu had a special message for this special day as well. The most extraordinary thing about Holy Shasta Nelson Mandela was his ordinariness. He was just a particularly fine example of humanity. The principles on which he led his life are universal principles of love, fairness, and respect for others built on an understanding of the vulnerabilities that we all share, shaped in the Transkei villages, forged in the struggle against apartheid and cast in prison, he emerged a fully formed human being. Well, new plans for Madiba's former Johannesburg home were announced today as well. His first Houghton House, where he lived in the 1990s, is to be turned into a hotel and a place of reflection. Malungelo Boy reports. Commemorating the life of an icon through music. And it's Nelson Mandela's former home in Houghton that's being turned into the multi-million rand Mandela Presidential Center for Reflection. The aim to preserve the house where Madiba lived while negotiating for a democratic South Africa from 1992 until 1998 when he left the presidency. Those spearheading the initiative say the idea is to have a space for people to dialogue and reflect on Madiba. And there'll be a wall that's built with the old bricks just to ensure that you have a continuity of, call it the, the spirit of the, of the house, but also the, the rooms inside. His bedroom, for instance, is going to be kept to its original form. And those who spent most of their time at the house with Madiba have some special memories. It was in this house that we had a sleepless nights when the Cortesa was started. We had to wake up at 3 a.m. to make sure that he is well fed. 
Former President Tabombeki says there are practical ways of living out what Madiba stood for. As you've heard, everybody says we must honor the legacy. And the slogan actually is be the legacy of Mandela. Now we have a challenge to translate that into, into practical action. Mbegi says it's critical for the country to look at what has not worked in addressing the country's challenges and revisit those issues. Malunghe Lubui, Johannesburg. Former U.S. President Barack Obama in the country for Madiba Centenary spent today with 200 young Africans who are here in Johannesburg on a leadership program. Heidi Jokas reports. 200 young Africans who are hoping to change the African continent and make a difference globally were told by former U.S. President Barack Obama that anything is possible no matter how young you are. These future leaders are part of the Obama Foundation's leadership development program. They got to ask Obama questions and he advised them to pursue their dreams in whatever space they chose. A politics that mobilizes the grassroots is more likely to break through than a politics that is based on transactions. If, 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 if you are trying to maneuver to have the right sponsor and the you know, right patron and you're going to get slotted and, uh, you know, and it, then you may have to wait a long time because that's just the nature of those transactions. But if you are mobilizing young people or you're mobilizing you know, farmers who feel that nobody's paying attention to them or you're, you're mobilizing uh, college students who are unemployed or uh, you are doing something that is showing that you're making a difference, then nobody can take that base from you. It's not dependent on somebody from the top. It's coming from people. You've earned it from the bottom. One participant says the continent's youth is ready to lead. For us to know that we're welcome to this table, we're welcome to make decisions, we're welcome to take up these positions, to take on the next phase of our, of our countries and our continent is an important thing. Um, it's, it's such a, a shame that people from outside Africa can see the potential of Africa. Uh, we need programs like these for Africans, by Africans, so that we can't take our continent even further. Obama advised these young leaders to build bridges and improve their country's economic conditions for the benefits of all Africans. Heidi Jokas, Johannesburg. In other news now, the ANC has fired an employee arrested in connection with a cash and transit heist in Soweto. Errol Velile present appeared in the Ruderport Magistrates Court today along with his three co-accused. Now this morning, DA Mayor of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, said he was concerned that present was still employed by the ANC despite his arrest earlier this month. But the ANC issued a statement this afternoon saying they had fired him. They say the crimes present is accused of are serious enough to warrant his dismissal from the job and possible suspension from the party. The ANC is dismayed by the fact that one of its employees was arrested and appeared in court allegedly for involvement in serious crimes. Crime remains a serious cancer in our young democracy, and we must continue to fight it in whatever way it manifests itself. We support the efforts by law enforcement agencies to investigate, arrest, and charge perpetrators to such high-priority crimes. Still ahead on E! News, land hearings in KwaZulu-Natal draw big crowds as Frey Hate residents have their say on land expropriation. Kwazulu Natal has entered the land expropriation debate. The land hearings, which are taking place across the country, heard from residents of Freyhate today. KwaZulu Natal is at the center of the discussion around the role of the Ingonyama Trust Board, which administers tribal land in that province. Desinthathia reports. 
The first of national hearings on land expropriation to take place in KwaZulu-Natal has drawn hundreds of people. The Constitutional Review Committee reminded attendees that this was not the platform to follow up on land claims. It was simply an opportunity to state if they were for or against the amendment of the Constitution to allow for land expropriation without compensation. Several speakers expressed concern over land administered by the Inkonyama Trust Board, saying it should not be touched. Others told the committee they wanted what was rightfully theirs. So to bestow dignity and honor to the departed, to those who lost their lives fighting the, the, for, for this land, we need to repossess our land. We as Khoisan are the first people of this country. We need to be part of any decisions of land. Those in opposition felt there were other solutions. Not everyone made it into the venue, though, and they weren't happy. Desen Tathia, Freyhead. Let's take a quick look at international news now. For the first time in 20 years, there are commercial flights between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Two planes carrying more than a thousand passengers have made the journey from Addis Ababa to Asmara. The neighboring countries were recently reconciled following a two-decade feud. Most of the passengers were people separated from their loved ones as a result of that conflict. And in Thailand, the 12 boys rescued from a cave last week have been discharged from hospital. The boys and their coach spoke about the near-death experience in a televised news conference shortly after leaving hospital. They explained how they tried to dig their way out of the flooded cave when they realized the water was rising. They described their rescue after two weeks underground as a miracle, but also expressed sadness at the death of one of the people who tried to rescue them. Recapping your top stories this evening, South Africans honor global icon Nelson Mandela on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Many have carried out good deeds in his memory, but important messages about South Africa today as well. And the ANC Saxon employee arrested in connection with a cash in transit heist. We've got your weather news next. And then, what's a birthday celebration without cake? And this is a cake certainly big enough for at least 100 candles. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Weather Center. As we head into Thursday, we could continue to see patchy showers over parts of the Western Cape, and we will see a lot of cloud creeping into the northeastern areas. And then during the course of Thursday, it's going to become dry and partly cloud over parts of the Northern and Western Cape. Mostly sunny skies are forecast for the rest of the country. However, we will continue to see quite a lot of cloud over the easternmost parts of the country. Over the Western areas, bird winds are going to be blowing towards the South and the West Coast allowing for very warm afternoon temperatures over these parts of the country. Then in the evening, we will see more cloud creeping into the eastern areas, and we are going to be watching this cold front that is heading towards our shores. Now, we are going to see mostly sunny skies on Thursday for much of the Northern Cape with slightly warmer daytime temperatures up in turn reaching a high of around 22 degrees. Partly cloudy, dry and warm weather is forecast across much of the Western Cape. Cape Town warming to 27, the same for Swellendam and around Muscle Bay, just a degree warmer in George, peaking at 28 degrees. It's going to be sunny and mild to warm across much of the Eastern Cape. Port Elizabeth warming to around 25, the same for Bisho, East London, Pixel. 24 degrees. Sunny skies are focused across much of Kwasulu Natal, where top temperatures in the upper teens and lower 20s are going to persist on Thursday. It's going to be sunny and cool to mild for the Malanga High Fraud. Mbombela stays stuck at the 18 degree mark with partly cloudy skies overhead. We will continue to see a lot of cloud over the eastern areas of Limpopo with light rain and drizzle around Toyandu, where high of 18 is expected. 
Sunny skies are forecast across the northwest where top temperatures are going to stay in the upper teens on Thursday afternoon. We are also going to see mostly clear skies across the free state, chilly in the morning for Bloemfontein and warming to 18 in the afternoon. Gauteng will be cloud free with a cool to mild afternoon temperatures, Soweto and Johannesburg picking at around 16 degrees. Now on Friday we should see lots of sunshine across much of the country. It's going to be warm over the southern and western areas. Similar weather continues on Saturday. And finally, residents of Johannesburg's Alexandra Township say former President Nelson Mandela will always be their favorite son. Madiba lived in Alexandra for a short while when he first arrived in Johannesburg. Residents celebrated his centenary with a special cake to honor the late icon today. Kailithle Kumalo was there for a taste. A young Nelson Mandela came to Johannesburg in the 1940s. This was the first place he called home in the city of gold, far away from his family in the then Transkei. In celebration of the centenary of his birthday, local chefs, cake masters and aid group, gift of the givers, baked this enormous birthday cake. It is a place where he burned the past book. Burning the past book signifies, is symbolic of fighting oppression and injustice. It is symbolic of not being afraid of being fearless, of standing ready to stand for the truth. It's been a painstaking process. The cake took three days to bake and needed about 116 kilograms of flour, 700 eggs, 60 liters of oil, and many other ingredients. We feel that we've been honored to make the, to, to make the, the Nelson Mandela cake, the, big, the cake that we believe that is big, that was never been made for Nelson Mandela, more especially in Alexandra or anywhere else that I don't know. And then it was time to tuck in. Young and old were part of the festivities. The community says it's important to ensure this heritage site is preserved and they want authorities to invest more resources here. Today is the day where people come together and celebrate this hero who did a lot for us, you know. So I think today is a day where we never get to celebrate a lot of things. But today, we're given that opportunity. Even arts children come out and do whatever they're doing to celebrate and to show the talent that they have. And we're glad that this celebration came to Alexandra where he was living. Madiba once described Alexandra as exhilarating, adventurous, and full of resourceful people. It's been particularly a special day for this community. Kailithe Kumalo, Alexandra. Let's recap your top stories this evening. South Africans honor global icon Nelson Mandela on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Many have carried out good deeds today in his memory. The ANC sacks an employee arrested in connection with a cash and transit heist. That's your 8 o'clock news. If you've missed anything, you can catch up on ETV's YouTube channel. Take care. Good night.